A spokesman for Russian President Vladimir Putin said Tuesday that the doctrine on nuclear deterrence was revised to stay in line with the current situation. The Russian Federation reserves the right to use nuclear weapons in case of aggression with the use of conventional weapons against it and or against the Republic of Belarus as a member state of the Union State, which causes a critical threat to both their sovereignty and or territorial integrity," said Peskov. Aggression against the Russian Federation by any non-nuclear state with the participation or support of a nuclear state is considered as a joint attack," he added. Putin signed a new doctrine Tuesday that lowers the threshold for using nuclear weapons. Putin's endorsement of the new nuclear deterrent policy comes as the conflict in Ukraine marks the 1,000-day milestone since he sent troops into Ukraine on February 24, 2022. It follows President Joe Biden's decision to let Ukraine strike targets inside Russia with U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles. The signing of the doctrine, which says that any massive aerial attack on Russia could trigger a nuclear response, reflects Putin's readiness to tap the country's nuclear arsenal to force the West to back down as Moscow is pressing a slow-moving offensive in Ukraine. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the decision authorizing the use of the U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles by Ukraine to strike inside Russia will add fuel to the fire in the conflict. The weapons are likely to be used in response to North Korea's decision to send thousands of troops to support Russia in the Kursk region where Ukraine mounted a military incursion over the summer. It is obvious that the outgoing administration in Washington intends to take steps and they have been talking about this, to continue adding fuel to the fire and provoking further escalation of tensions around this conflict, Peskov said. It is the second time the U.S. has permitted the use of Western weapons inside Russian territory within limits after permitting the use of HIMARS systems, a shorter-range weapon, to stem Russia's advance in Ukraine's Kharkiv region in May. Peskov also rejected the idea of a ceasefire along the line of combat in Ukraine, saying it's unacceptable for Russia. Если такое решение действительно было, было сформулировано э, и доведено до э, киевского режима, то, конечно же, это э, качественно новый виток, э, виток напряженности и качественно новая ситуация с точки зрения вовлеченности Соединенных Штатов в этот конфликт. Очевидно, что уходящая, уходящая администрация в э, Вашингтоне намерены принять шаги, собственно, они об этом и говорили, с тем, чтобы продолжать, продолжать подливать масло в огонь, в огонь и продолжать провоцировать дальше нагнетание напряженности вокруг этого конфликта. Президент Путин уже объяснил и объяснил очень просто. Дело в том, что эти удары наносят не Украина, эти удары наносят те страны, которые дают разрешение, потому что Целенаведение, другое обслуживание выполняют не украинские военные. Это делают э, военные специалисты из этих самых западных стран. А это э, кардинальным образом как раз меняет модальность их вовлеченности в конфликт. 
В этом опасность провокационность этой ситуации. Конечно, как это вариант заморозки по, по, по линии боевого столкновения, конечно, априори неприемлемым для, для российской стороны. И в данном случае июньские сформулированные условия президента Путина, они полностью сохраняют свою актуальность. Это то, что нужно сделать для э, того, чтобы боевые действия были остальными. China's foreign ministry on Monday warned no security cooperation pact should harm the interests of third parties after the Philippines and the U.S. signed an agreement on military intelligence sharing. Dubbed the General Security of Military Information Agreement or SOMIA, the deal would enable the two countries to share classified military information securely amid shared concerns over China's growing aggressiveness in the region. When asked about the pact at a daily news briefing, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian said it should not undermine regional peace and exacerbate regional tensions. He underscored that upholding good neighborliness and strategic autonomy was the only way to maintain regional stability, which appeared to be a warning to the Philippines as the two countries become entangled in more frequent collisions at sea. Also during Monday's briefing, Lin renewed the calls for a political solution to the war in Ukraine after the Biden administration authorized Ukraine to use U.S.-supplied missiles to strike deeper inside Russia. The decision allowing Kyiv to use the Army Tactical Missile System, or ATACMS, for attacks farther inside Russia comes as President Vladimir Putin positions North Korean troops along Ukraine's northern border to try to reclaim hundreds of miles of territory seized by Ukrainian forces. Lin also reiterated China's strict control of military and dual-use drones when asked about the latest findings of the European Union that China was producing armed drones for Russia. China has always taken a prudent and responsible attitude towards the export of military products and has never provided lethal weapons to parties involved in the conflict, Lin argued. He called for the relevant countries to stop making groundless speculations and slander. Lun前署合种军事协定，开展合种防务安全合作，都不得都不得针对第三方或损害第三方利益，更不得破坏地区和平、加剧地区紧张，维护本国安全、维护地区和平稳定，唯一正确的选择是坚持睦邻友好、